The plasma membrane is made up of several organic molecules. I will concentrate on two of them in this presentation. The first molecule is a lipid. It is called a phospholipid because instead of the usual three fatty acid chains, there are only two. The third bonding position is with a phosphate group. The phospholipid molecule is divided into a head region and a tail region. The head region is the glycerol and phosphate group. The tail region is the fatty acid chains. The head is hydrophilic, attracted to water. The tail is hydrophobic, repelled by water. It is this property which allows for the unique molecular alignment that makes the plasma membrane. If a droplet of phospholipid was put into water, a mycel would form. A mycel is a sphere with the hydrophilic heads on the surface, the tails inside away from the water. Our bodies are made up of approximately 60% water and trillions of cells. The water can be found inside the cells, outside the cells, and in the bloodstream. The location of water and the phospholipid, hydrophilic, and hydrophobic ends enable the membrane to form a bilayer of lipids. The currently accepted model of the cell membrane was developed by Singer and Nicholson in 1972 at the University of California, San Diego. Pictured here, the plasma membrane looks like a sea of lipid with icebergs floating in. The membrane is very flexible and has a fluid motion. This design of the plasma membrane is called the fluid mosaic model. Quite often, these proteins have sugar molecules attached to them, forming glycoproteins. These molecules extend from the membrane surface and act as an identification marker. The proteins are used by the immune system to identify a cell as being self, or foreign, called non-self. Each individual has their own biochemical makeup. In other words, each human being has their own set of cellular proteins. But if a cell comes into the body that has a different set of proteins, whether it is a bacteria or an organ transplant, the immune system may identify it as self or as non-self and attack. In order for the cell to survive, many different materials must be able to cross the plasma membrane. When water passes through a cell's membrane, the type of diffusion is called osmosis. When solid particles pass through a cell's membrane, the type of diffusion is called dialysis. Before looking at this movement through the membrane, it is important to understand the movement of molecules in general. Atoms and molecules are in constant motion. This random motion will disrupt the cluster rather than maintain it. This motion is referred to as Brownian movement. This motion is always present in some degree, in gases, in liquids, and even in solids. For instance, if a bottle of perfume is left open in a room, eventually, no matter where you are in that room, you are able to smell the perfume. The molecules of air hit the liquid, causing the liquid molecules to move into the air. At the time the bottle is first opened, there is a high concentration of perfume molecules in the bottle, a very low concentration of perfume in the air. As the perfume molecules are bombarded by the air, the concentration of perfume is dispersed into the air. In other words, the perfume is moving down a concentration gradient, high to low. This movement is called diffusion. It uses Brownian movement. Now let's take a look at another example of diffusion. In this aquarium of water, we drop some blue dye. As the water molecules move, they bump into the dye molecules. The dye molecules, at first in a high concentration, start moving and bumping into each other and the water molecules, moving into the area of lower concentration. As this movement continues, the dye spreads out and equilibrium is attained. Equilibrium is equal concentrations of the dye and water in every area of the aquarium. Remember, Brownian movement continues even after equilibrium is reached. Although extremely thin, the plasma membrane separates the contents of the cell from the environment. The membrane has several functions. This video concentrated on the movement of materials through the plasma membrane. Remember that this membrane is selectively permeable and can prevent materials from passing through or keeping materials in, and it will permit, even facilitate, the entrance and exit of materials. Materials may move through membranes, passively or actively. In this video segment, passive transport, which uses Brownian movement, was introduced. Passive transport includes diffusion, defined as the movement of materials from a region of high concentration to low concentration. Two specific forms of diffusion are osmosis and dialysis. These processes are essential to the survival of the cell. 
Nutrients must enter, wastes must exit. The structure of the membrane allows for the processes to take place, which enables the cell to live.